Hi everyone, welcome. <clears throat> welcome to Inner Realms Energy Work, patent pending. <laughs> so I'm so happy to see y'all here. Uh, the journey in which I took to get to this point is absurdly convoluted and it has been extremely arduous. Many of you have been there at some of the high and low points. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much. I really wanted to do this class as an offering to my community, um, my community at large. I am super blessed to have friends uh, all over the world and I love them. And uh, I like to share quite a bit and I wanted to share in a way that was accessible. And now with Zoom and, you know, the, the pandemic and, you know, various lockdowns as a result, you know, a lot of people are, obviously a lot of people are accessing Zoom and other, you know, web platforms um, for this kind of class. And so I figured, well, I don't leave my house anyway. Um, now I can teach and not leave my house, it's perfect. And it's socially acceptable, which is the key part. It's the part I care about the most. Joking. Okay, so what I'm teaching here today um, and for the next six weeks is a class, basically a class on how to know yourself extremely well and also on how to create the things that you want and to stop creating the things that you don't want. And so um, to say that you're creating things that you don't want um, is to say that you're creating anything, right? And so, you know, that is not a belief held by our society, at least my society at large. It's not something I learned in, in sixth grade science class um, with, uh, who was my sixth grade science class teacher? Mr. Gordon. <laughs> he was a good guy, actually. I liked him. Uh, yeah, he did not teach me uh, that my whole reality is coming from me, and therefore I have the power to change anything, create anything, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, he taught me the exact opposite, more or less, right? Which the scientific modern worldview is basically, you know, there was an explosion that came out of nowhere billions of years ago, which erupted into trillions and trillions of small particles would bounce together long enough to create you. And then out of that randomness comes your life, right? Or you can believe various religions <clears throat> and that's a whole other talk. I don't know if we'll have that talk. We might have that talk. Um, basically, this worldview, this understanding that I'm putting forward is, is inner realms, meaning what is inside of you is directly reflected on the outside of you with no aberration, okay? And, you know, with, with that belief comes uh, many, 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 many consequences. Um, and it's kind of like, the first step on the road to recovery, you know, like, like recovery, recovery, like AA recovery, like as if we were all um, like addicts. And what, what's our addiction? Our addiction is a type of lack of responsibility. You know, um, in, in the Buddha, the Buddha called people like that <clears throat> Bala. What's Bala? What's Balasana, Vic? Do you know Balasana? Child's Child. Pose. Yeah, good, Daniela. Child's pose. Yeah. It, it, so he, the Buddha called people who thought that what was happening to them randomly, he called them children. Um, and uh, people people who understand where the reality is coming from perfectly they call them um, like some kind of higher being or something, otherworldly being, higher being, 
talk for it. And so that doesn't mean you're bad or something like that. That's not the point. The point is, if you don't understand the basic mechanism by which your reality is is being created, then it is very difficult to to make conscious choices. Um, I've seen some of you through some hard times, and you've seen me through some hard times. And at the root of, a, of all of our issues is what do I do about it, right? I mean, if we always knew what to do, I wouldn't call Bethany for advice, right? Um, if we always knew what to do, I wouldn't call Chelsea complaining about my life, right? Because there would be nothing to complain about. You would just do the thing. Um, and you would consistently do the thing to the point where there was no things left to do. And that's what various yogis, sages, wise people um, have recommended for uh, thousands of years. Unfortunately, for some reason, that's the hardest thing for humans to do. The hardest thing for humans to do, by my estimation and um, the Buddhas, and maybe some other people, uh, Lao Tzu, the wise man who wrote the Tao Te Ching and others, they said that, you know, basically taking responsibility for your world is very difficult for humans, right? And, you know, if you, have you ever raised children or remember being a child yourself, um, you can see that. You can see, and some people who don't mature, right, <clears throat> past certain stages in their development, they have a difficult time admitting they did something wrong and then admitting that that mistake has, has repercussions in their life. And then those repercussions continue to create things that they don't wanna create. And if you're an adult watching a child, it's very easy to see that, right? You hit your brother, your brother's mad at you. Then you try to go to share something, you know, you want you ask the brother to share something, doesn't want to share, you're like, why not? You're like, because you hit me last week, I don't like you now, right? And that seems very obvious and clear. And there's an understanding that in the same way. In the same way that I can see, maybe we should mute our mics. I'm muting everybody. Um, in the same way that seems obvious to us, um, to to people who have who have meditated very deeply, um, who have lived a certain kind of lifestyle where they high hold a very high integrity, um, especially with um, ethics around not hurting people and uh, deep integrity with their own heart and you know their mission. Those people tend. What happens is another level of consciousness opens up for those people where it is easy for them to see how the actions that certain people are taking, taking result in difficulties in their life. What does, what does Einstein say? You can't solve a problem on the same level of understanding of that problem, right? Something like that. Meaning, you know, you have to go up a level to then get what's going on or you have like myopia like literally um you're too close to the problem right you're, you're nearsighted and so what i want to present to you is a method that i've cultivated used my i use myself every single day of my life okay this is not a theory for me this is not something that I just read once in a book. I've read it in books, but not once. Um, it's something that after about 20 years of practice, I have applied as best I can every day of my life to the, to the, the greatest refinement that I can such that I can create the things I want in my world. And I'm not perfect at it by any means, um, and I don't have every single thing I want in my world, um, but I can see the steps. And I think that's really important. So I've been helping people create the lives that they want for, for many years. And 
it's really important to people to know that they can take a step. Because if it goes too long where they feel like they can't do anything, it's, it gets really um, depressing, honestly, or it's just the weight. You know, when people feel like there's no action that they can take, it's really hard. Um, I went to an event in New York last year, two years ago. I don't know. Vic, when was that? When did Geshe come to New York last? Was that last year? I think it was a year and a half ago, maybe? Yeah, Lincoln Center, right? Like a year and a half yeah. ago. Yeah, okay, yeah, it was a year and a half ago. And I brought my dad with me because I wanted my dad to meet my Buddhist teacher. And so I was like, finally, they meet. <laughs> and uh, so my dad's a little older now. So we took the train. Um, we took the subway. He hadn't been on the subway in like 40 years or something. You know, we had to go up the steps. Then we had to walk to Lincoln Center. Couldn't find the place. Da, 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 da. We get there. We get there late. The door is closed. Okay. It's winter in New York. I'm with my septuagenarian dad you know he's he's been around and uh he's like he's like all right let's go home it's closed i was like no 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 that ain't happening and so i was like we and they're at the door and they're like they're like no you, no one no one allowed it no one allowed it and i was like no and uh within i don't know within 20 minutes we had a seat in the auditorium Okay, and that was no small feat. I had to pull out some tricks to make that happen, okay? But it, was, it happened in stages, it happened in steps. First, they were like, you're not allowed in. And I was like, really? Okay. And I stood out there, did some internal things, and they were like, it's cold out, you should sit in the lobby. I was like, yeah, we should. And then we're in the lobby. I was like, ha ha. So we're in the lobby and I just sit in the corner, cross-legged. My dad's looking at me like, what are you doing? I'm like, don't worry about it, dad, I got this. Next thing you know, they're offering us chairs and beverages. I'm like, yes, I would love a beverage, okay? And then da 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 da. You know, like, you know, some space opened up. Why don't you guys just come in? I was like, you know, I was thinking the same thing, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, and that's just one example, you know. And that's that's a little thing. I mean, it's big because I really wanted my dad to meet um, my teacher, um, and. Uh, but uh, there's many things like that. You know, right now, you know, maybe you don't have money. Maybe you don't have the relationship you want. Um, maybe you don't live where you want. You know, maybe there's conflict where you want. Hey, there's a pandemic going on. Maybe that's not what you want in your life. Okay, for instance. So all those things, what I'm proposing to you today, you can take it or leave it. Um, what I'm proposing to you is that you have 100% power in all of those realms. There's nothing, my proposition to you is that there's nothing random in your life, okay? Not, not only is there nothing random, there's nothing in your life that's happening, especially on a regular basis, that you're not actively giving power to. When I say actively, I don't mean consciously, right? What did my ad for this course on Instagram say? learn to consciously create your own reality, okay? What I didn't write in there, I could have, is like, you're already unconsciously creating your reality. Meaning, okay, when I was a little kid, I forget how old I was. I think I was like nine. Uh, Solomon, I was in the Chamonix Valley, like not far from the creek, okay? And I was, Walking around, I was like, wait a second. How come I'm always at the center of my world? Do you ever think about that? I mean, it seems like, well, of course you're always at the center of your world. But no, I never, I've never been in a world where I'm not the center of the whole universe. Have you? And not in a conceited way, like, I'm the center of, the, I'm the center of reality. <laughs> No, not like that. Like, this is called uh, uh, ontology. It's a fancy word. It means how do things exist? Like, how are things, right? Um, 
And ontologically speaking, things always exist with you at the center and everything else around you, no matter where you go, no matter how fast you run, you're always at the center, right? Okay, Is true or untrue? Can anyone say that's not true for them? If it's not, I really wanna know about it. All right, exactly. So this is key because we take it for granted. You know, I'm a huge uh, Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes fan. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Sherlock Holmes, okay? I know he's fictional, it's not the point. I'm just obsessed with, with this, this level of deduction where you could figure out like a murder like by like a scrap of wool or something, okay? So, no, this is just, this is just deduction, think about it. We operate on a set of assumptions constantly. And it's, it's necessary, because if you try not to operate on all these assumptions, you'd probably lose it. I mean, you assume whatever you're sitting on right now is going to hold you up, for instance. You know, you assume that the earth is going to continue to earth, you know, for the next 15 minutes. You assume that water is going to have the same effect when you drink it tomorrow as it did the day before, right? You, you, we operate on these assumptions, but we operate on deeper assumptions and assumptions that are so deep, we don't even know that they're assumptions, okay? I call it uh, the, the fish and water thing, okay? I had a friend who once, she, um, she took a pretty large dose of marijuana and you know, marijuana is like, I guess it's like legal everywhere now or like half the states and all these places. It wasn't legal then. And I think she ate. And I've had so many people this happen to. They eat some marijuana, <laughs> eat some ganja, and they, it, they just go to another level. They, they were not ready for that. They wanted the giggles. Instead, ganja decided to tell them about the secrets of the universe, okay? And so um, she, go, she goes on them. She, she's on it. I think she had brownies or something. She's walking around Philly, of all places. And she's like, yeah. She tells, this is afterwards. She tells me, she's like, I just felt like, like I was at the bottom of an ocean of air. And I'm like, we are at the bottom of an ocean of air. <laughs> it's called the atmosphere, literally, right? But how many times have you thought that in your life? I live at the bottom of an ocean of air. Maybe zero, correct? How, how long have you been alive, right? You don't have to tell me, you get it. So no, we operate on all these assumptions. We take things for granted because they're so, they're such a part of our environment that um, they're like second nature to us, okay? Um, and so there's, yeah, the ocean of air thing is true, right? That's how, that's how straws work, right? A straw works because when you suck on it, the air pushes down on it and then it shoots into your mouth, right? 15 pounds per square inch at sea level. That's the pressure. Yeah, right? And if you go in water, it gets more because water weighs more than air. You, you get it. So, but really, so it's the same thing. We're used to air. We don't think, where's my next breath coming from? Unless we live in, I don't know, New Delhi or Beijing, <laughs> you know, the air is pretty rough out there, right? So, so there's assumptions in your mind that are way deeper than that. And they're so deep that if someone, okay, I've been studying this stuff really intensely for the last 10 years. For the first 10 years, it's pretty intense. For the next 10 years, super intense, okay? And I got really into it, okay? I get really excited about this stuff. And I always want to tell people, right? So I'm, so I'm at my job in Santa Cruz, California, of all places. And uh, someone comes, there's many stories, but... One time this guy comes to the desk and he's like, 
He's paying because I, I worked at a, uh, a retail place selling uh, Chinese herbs. And he, he goes to pay. And I realized in that moment this fundamental truth that, because I saw $3, but I realized, I'm like, we call them dollars. We call them the same name, but they could never be the same thing, right? They're all $1 bill, right? But each one is perfectly unique, correct? And so therefore, they're not all $1 bills. They're all something we call $1 bills that could never be called the same thing because they're all completely different, right? So it's this whole, and, and if that sounds like bullshit to you or like, who cares, then like, I get it. I know. It just seems like nonsense, but it really isn't. If snowflakes are, every snowflake is completely unique. How could you ever identify two things as a snowflake? So he puts the dollars down and I start telling him about this. I'm like, oh my God. And he looks at me like, I'm the biggest asshole. He's just like, he's like, dude, just give me my change, man. Like, stop talking about the dollars. And I was like, all right, I get it. Like, not everybody wants to hear about the dollars. And that's why in, I invited people to come to my class. <laughs> and you get to volunteer, voluntarily come before I can berate you with these things. Um, but it's true. Everything is unique. And even though we, we make all these assumptions, you know, two people look at the same object or event, and they always see something different even though they call it the same thing, right? And, if, and uh, I first learned this as a child with car accidents. Anyone, any two people see a car accident, they will say something vastly different sometimes, especially if they got in the accident together, right? <laughs> it was your fault. No, 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 it, was, it wasn't my fault. It was your fault. You ran the red. Well, you didn't put your blinker on, blah, 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 right? But then was, my mind went, I was like, car accidents? Isn't, what, what isn't like a car accident? Because everything is an event. You know, even an object is a type of event. It just says it's holding a form for a time, right? Which makes it an event. Um, and then I got really nerdy and started studying projective geometry. You don't have to study that, really. <laughs> but, and I realized that if you're looking at something at a from a different angle, right, those different angles, so you could never see the same object. You'd have to be in the same body, looking through the same eyes, the same exact moment, which would mean you are the same person, which would then end the whole argument. Because if there's different people, then there's different perspectives. And if there's different perspectives, there's never one object. But we call it the same thing. And not only that, but it functions. And that's why we don't care, right? Bethany's a lawyer. She's very practical. She's got stuff to do. She's like, well, word, we all know you're smart. How does this help me? You know, who cares? I look a cup, you know, uh, Vic looks at the cup. Yeah. So what? We can both drink water out of it, right? Who cares? Okay. Uh, but with, with cops, it's not a big deal because who, yeah, who does care? But, but what happens when it's pandemics? What happens when it's presidents? <laughs> what happens when it's not my president, right? What happens when it's your husband, okay? Then it matters because your husband sees the object called him one way and you see the object called him, the husband, a complete different way. And then you start to argue about it, right? But, but you're always arguing about two different things. You're arguing about two separate perspectives. And any time we don't take complete responsibility for our perspective and everything that it triggers in us, we are going to have a problem. Okay, and uh, Lord Buddha called it dukkha. The problem that comes from thinking things aren't your fault when they, everything is. Okay, people think 
the Buddha said all life is suffering. He never said that. He never said all life is suffering. That makes no sense because the Buddha doesn't suffer. That's the whole point. The point is, if you're a fish in water and you know there's water, you can do stuff that fish in water who don't know they're in water can't do, right? And this is proven, this is called physics, okay? And the difference between physics and metaphysics is physics. Physics comes from a Sanskrit root, okay? Boo. Boo, boo means uh, to be. It comes in the English as the word be, like B-E, like B-U, right? Meaning like how things are. That's all physics means, how are things, okay? But there's a problem that happens with humans. And I encourage you all to meditate because if you wanna learn these things for yourself, because you can listen to me, blah, 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 all day, you come to my six classes, maybe learn a few things. Um, and have some cool things happen in your life. But if you realize this stuff yourself, you, you're unstoppable. And if you realize how to realize things yourself, then game over, okay? And that's what I want to help you towards. But I can't make you meditate. You know, I can't like hold you up and hold you still um, and make you sit there. Um, I meditate lying down, actually. Okay, because I get more mileage out of my meditation this way, um, but it's it can be difficult because people usually fall asleep. Um, if you can lie down without falling asleep, this is a way to meditate. Okay, they call it yoga nidra. Nidra. Um. Yeah. So if you, if you learn these principles and meditate with them, meditate on them and meditate on yourself and your life in general, um, you can uh, learn that these things are true, right? Physics, like this is the way things are. But the thing that separates physics and a lot of this, which we would call metaphysics, meta means above or beyond, um, is you cannot see a lot of these things from a normal state of consciousness. And that's the problem, okay? Then that's the, that's the difficulty with uh, modern science. Modern science is wonderful. It came out of a whole movement in Europe, which came out of another movement um, by the Arabs, which came out of a previous movement uh, in, from the Hindus River Valley which is now India and Pakistan, right? So <laughs> what they were using, they used logic and applied it to the world and they got results that, consistent results, because that's all you can really say. Um, any scientist worth his or her while would say, we just don't know of any exception. There could be one, right? To gravity, for instance. We don't know of an exception, you know, and, except, you know, speeds approaching the speed of light, for instance, right? People didn't know about that exception until Einstein was like, well, if you go really fast, some of these rules break down, like time and space. Those are two big things, right? Um, but basically, I'm entreating you to become spiritual scientists, right? So you take the principle and you experiment. Who's the experiment? You're the experiment. <laughs> and you're not my experiment, okay? I mean, you are in a way, but that's the quiet part. Did I say the loud part quiet? Okay. No, really, <laughs> you're your own experiment because it's your life. If you don't think it's your life, you're gonna have a lot of issues, it really. It's not your mom's life. It's not your dad's life. It's not your brother's life. It's not your boyfriend's life. It's not your husband's life, your girlfriend. It ain't your president's life, yada, 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 okay? There's a caveat to all of reality. I'll teach you a, a principle. There's nothing in this universe that happens without your consent. A few years ago, I told Bethany a little bit about uh, 
admiralty law. Remember that, Bethany? And so <laughs> I was studying it. I stopped studying it because almost everyone I know who studies it literally, literally goes crazy. They just lose their mind. So I was studying this. It's like the law of the sea, common law, blah, blah, blah. And there's a lot in there. And there's a lot that seems like not true. I don't know. But when I got to the bottom, and I had another friend who I turned on to it, and he went crazy with it. And like, but he said the same exact thing. The same exact thing after some time. He said, you know what this taught me? Nothing can happen without my free will consent. You know, it's all of reality basically is based on a series of contracts. But these contracts, many of them are subconscious. Most of them, okay, thousands, millions, you have millions of subconscious contracts that you don't know about, okay? And if you want to know about them, just get into an intimate relationship, okay? And then you will see how could this other person not believe this, 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 this? Why do I see you feel so violated? This, 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 this? Because those are all your subconscious agreements coming to the surface as triggered by somebody who is perfectly selected by you subconsciously to trigger all those things. And then you have an opportunity via that relationship as well as others to make a decision whether or not you stick with those contracts. But if you don't, the trick is knowing that you have a choice, right? I mean, that's the, I mean, if you really want to brainwash someone, okay, I, I'm a medical Qigong doctor. I don't know if I mentioned that. And my medical Qigong teacher, who's also Chelsea's medical Qigong teacher, is very, very powerful sorcerer, okay? <laughs> he uses the word doctor. Okay, it's sorcery. And he, uh, mainly of the Taoist kind, but he studied under many, many sorcerers. Uh, magic. Um, and uh, when he trained us, he trained us how to curse people. Why? So that we go around cursing people? No, <laughs> not at all. The exact opposite. So we'd know what a curse was. Right? You have to know because in ways we've all been cursed. When your mom, when you said, can I fly mom? And your mom said, no, she cursed you. Because all of a sudden, mom, in all of her, she didn't want you to jump out the window, right? Probably, right? So like, I'm not hating on mom. But what she did was she introduced a spell, right? Like words, spell is in the spelling, okay? She introduced words into your psyche, which then limited your ability to do something, correct? That's a curse. Um, it's a benign one, there's benign curses, right? Um, moms are great at those, <laughs> they mean well. But see, moms always, moms and dads too, whomever raised you, pass on their beliefs to you. Right? And as children, our jobs are to absorb their beliefs. If you can't absorb their beliefs, you will not learn the language very well, right? Because the way you learn language is through basically absorption, right? You curse around a kid accidentally, and next thing you know, they're like, shit, man, shit. And you're like, what? Where did you learn that? And they're like, I don't know. They don't even know. They're like, mm -hmm. You know? Because you mumbled it one time, you don't even remember. And uh, then your little one's running around cussing. And you're like, oops, I got to watch what I say. But the way to pass this information is not only through, um, through words. Actually, most of it is not passed through words, OK? So I've been giving classes on anti-racism recently. Um, thanks to a whole new level of openness um, in the country around uh, looking at our, our racism and our history. And, uh, and it's difficult, okay? 
trigger alert, trigger alert. It's difficult because mostly I'm teaching white people about racism, right? But what happens is there are many people, well-intended people, my best friend's white, okay? Well, well-intended well people, they're like, I'm not racist. And you're like, listen, listen, I'm not saying you're gonna burn a cross on my lawn next week, okay? What I am saying about racism and our topic is that we, through socialization, uh, body language, cues, um, what we say, what we don't say, and even our thoughts, believe it or not, those of you who are telepathic, uh, you don't need me to, to convince you, you know, okay? Those of you who aren't telepathic yet, it's true. We, we feel thoughts from people. You know, even if you're not telepathic, probably all of you are empaths. If you weren't, you wouldn't be, okay, if you're not an empath, send me a, a private message, okay? I have this funny feeling, I'm not gonna get any messages. You wouldn't be here if you weren't, okay? And so all that, the feelings, the thoughts, the body language and stuff, we absorb it. And it, 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 turn, it, it creates a set of beliefs, um, habits and structures that limit us in certain ways. And we need limits. You don't want your kids running in the road. You know, I did. I've gotten hit by several cars because I'm crazy. I'm wild. Okay. My parents told me not to play in the road. I did. All right. Bad idea. Don't play in the road, kids. Okay. Um, but then sometimes there's a reason to go in the road, right? Like you got to save somebody. But then if you have a limited belief, it's like, oh, I can't go on the road, then you can't do that. Right. So you have to become conscious of these limiting beliefs, and then you can make a decision whether or not they work for you. And sometimes they work for a time. You know, an example of something limiting is like an egg or a womb, right? If a chick does not have an egg to develop in, or a human child doesn't have a womb or something womb-like, like an incubator, right? <clears throat> to develop in, they will die, correct? So if you don't have certain structure around you, especially at certain uh, developmental stages, you will either, you will die or hurt yourself badly. So we need certain structures. The problem is when we don't need it anymore and we still have it, right? You wanna, okay, me, I'm starting my own business. Look, you're watching it happen actually. This is, this is it, this is the business starting. Um, you know, and like I have all these beliefs about technology and electronics and all this stuff. And I've, these have helped me immensely. I've been able to meditate more hours than you could even imagine in the last 18-ish years. Okay. And the reason I was able to, is so I was like, I'm not listening to music. I'm not watching movies. I'm not using technology. I'm just doing nature, meditation, and organic food for the next however long it takes for me to reach my goal, right? Okay, and so that's a very limiting belief. And most people are like, word, you're insane. Do something else. Here's an iPhone, look at it, you know? And so <clears throat> someone did, they, they, they forced me to have this iPhone. <laughs> now someone gave me my iPhone. And so what happened was that really served me for a time. Um, and I did learn a lot, but when it came time to like, okay, now I have to share with the world. Um, Bethany's been bugging me to teach her some stuff for like a decade, you know? So I'm like, all right, Bethany asked me that thing. All right, for Bethany, I'll do it. And so, but then I hit all those limiting beliefs, like in my psyche. And then there's feelings because I put a curse on me. I put a spell on me on purpose. You know, when I say curse and spell, it's not like, I'm not like double bubble boil in trouble, you know, over a cauldron. But I mean, if you have a cauldron, you can, you can use the cauldron. Um, cauldrons are fine. But I'm saying it's really more your intent, um, like what your thoughts are and your words and your body language. If you put those together, <clears throat> you create a spell. Like, if you're constantly saying, I can't do something and holding this posture, I can't do it. 
you probably won't do it. And even if you do do it, you'll think you didn't do it, <clears throat> okay? So it, it's important to have structure for a time. And then <clears throat> you, you wanna move away from it, move out of it. But if you don't know that you have a choice, again, or don't know that those structures are there, just as temporary holding patterns, right? Like the egg or the womb. Because you know what happens? What happens to a chick if it doesn't break out of the egg? Do you know? It dies. It chokes on its own feces, actually. Because waste matter builds up, and then it really, like, there's nothing to breathe, and it's just, bleh, you know? That doesn't sound fun. And you, okay, here's another thing. Do you know what happens to a chick if you don't, if you break the egg open for it? Um, their beak never forms correctly. Meaning the action of breaking themselves out of the container which held and nurtured them so, so they could go to another, another level of freedom um, actually is what makes them strong enough for that next level of freedom, right? The annoying action of me making Instagram posts, which, which actually turns out to be pretty fun. Um, and the attention's nice too, right? All the likes, I like likes, right? Um, that action, now I'm, I'm, I'm cultivating new skills. I'm like, oh, okay, I can make a post. I can, I'll make another post. You know, it's not, it's, without the resistance, it's actually pretty easy, right? Um, soon I'll take a picture of myself, I swear, I don't know. The selfie, that's what they call it, right? I don't know, okay. So anyway, long story short, you want, to be con you want to become conscious of these beliefs so that you can make new decisions. And they're the things that are affecting your life. I mean, right now, <clears throat> I mean, okay, homework. Everyone needs to make a manifestation list, okay? This is manifestation 101. The first thing in manifesting anything is deciding what you want. Usually, usually, at, usually we can at least decide what we don't want, right? My, uh, my roommate's annoying. I don't want to live with them, you know? My job, I hate my job. I don't want this job, you know? Um, my girlfriend cheated on me. She didn't, by the way, but for instance, uh, I don't want my girlfriend, right? So that's, that's maybe a little easier. But if you just know what you don't want, it kind of can leave you in limbo, okay? So maybe reflect on <clears throat> the thing you don't want and even think of the opposite, you know? Roommate's annoying. <clears throat> I want a pleasant roommate, right? Job is, doesn't pay a lot. I want a job that pays more, right? Uh, partner is, is, you know, promiscuous, infidelous, I don't know what word that is. I want a dedicated partner, whatever, just the opposite. I mean, that's, a, that's an easy way. But, okay, one thing, you sh and this is key, you know, this is really key. Maybe it seems so basic, but really, it's, I just made this dream board. Okay, I'll tell you about my dream board. I made this dream board. It's secret dream board, no one's seen it, okay? I hate it. I made this dream board like a couple days ago. And, you know, I was like, you know what? I have not made a dream board in like six years. I'm gonna make a dream board. So I made one. Oh my God, in like two days, all of a sudden it's like, oh, like everything is just like, manifesting you know and there's other reasons for that i'm doing an insane amount of energy work um more than i'd recommend <laughs> to do actually and uh things are changing but it's amazing because the dream board by itself i mean it's great it's cute but with the conscious awareness with the energy work with the clear understanding of hey what's in my world is coming from me What's in my world is up to me. 
Therefore, what I have in my world now, whether good or bad, is also unconsciously my creation. And I want to make a new decision for this new thing. I'm going to get clear on what that is. And then acting like the thing I want to get. Okay, so that's crucial. And one second. Um, so, um, so every single religious spiritual system has a code of conduct, okay? And most of it is like everything you should have learned in kindergarten, okay? I skipped kindergarten, which I think damaged me actually, <laughs> because like I didn't learn There's certain things that didn't happen for me. But everything you should learn in kindergarten, what do, what do the yogis call this code of conduct? Anybody? Anybody? Yamas and niyamas. Ooh, good, David. Very good. Awesome. Do you know what yama means, David? Uh, no. Okay, no worries, no worries. Uh, uh, yama means to restrict, meaning don't do this stuff. Niyama means don't restrict double negative yeah exactly don't not do that meaning do it good uh i don't know ancient indian and tibetan philosophers they really like these double negatives i don't know i think they trained your mind actually um yeah knee knee comes in the english as no or not or non or um actually i think well that's a long story but anyway it means the things you should do and it's really basic, actually. It's, if you're a kid, this is what you tell your, if you're a mom, this is what you tell your kid. Don't hit your brother. Don't hit your friends, okay? That's the first one. It's called ahinsa. Don't whack people over the head, literally. Ahinsa, don't hit them. Satya, don't lie, okay? I know when you're lying, boy. Don't, <laughs> you know, don't lie. Ashteya, don't steal stuff from other people. It's not yours, don't take it, right? Uh, 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 brahmacharya, don't touch people in their privates if they don't let you. <laughs> it's pretty much it, you know? Or if you have an agreement with somebody else, okay? And then aprayagaha, share, share your stuff, okay? Don't be a hoarder. Okay? There's a lot of reasons not to be a hoarder. All right? That's the first five. Uh, you, you learn that in, in kindergarten over, you know, Legos. Okay, so, but why, 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 why? And this is all about alignment, becoming like the thing that you want to see in your world, right? And we have to say your world. If you say the world, it kind of, this fancy word, ob obfuscates, you know this word? It creates a, it, it clouds what's really going on. because. You don't know any other world except your world. You, have, you already admitted that at the beginning of class, right? You're the center of your universe, remember? Okay? I'm a trained debater, okay? So don't try to get over on me. You already admitted that. Okay, in, in, in Buddhist debate, we have a thing. It's Kalen. No, 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 no. You already said that. No, 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 no. You already said that, okay? So you, you're at the center of your world, right? So it's your world. You know, take responsibility for it. Um, in a, later in higher teachings, they tell you, no, it's your world. You created. No, there's no, there's no world. There's no world except yours. Okay. Um, people appear in your world. Hi, look, it's me. Um, but they appear in your world um, as a result of you. And so the yogis and, you know, Moses, if you're Christian and Muhammad, if you're Muslim, and uh, uh, Abraham, if you're Jewish, Moses too, you know, the guys, and uh, some other folks too, uh, said, do these things, and you'll get everything you want, right? And I don't know what happened to the books. Somehow, sometimes it's not that clear, okay? I'm going to clear it up. I'm, I'm here to clear up the whole thing, okay? It basically works like this. If you stop hitting people, 
you will not be able to see people getting hit. Okay? And you're like, what? It, uh, Master Patanjali in the Yoga Sutra said, if you practice ahimsa, which means nonviolence, perfectly, there will be no violence in your world. Zero. Okay? And uh, I don't know. I grew up in the Philadelphia area, a lot in Philly, New York, and like in the 80s. Okay? Not like now. I mean, now it's eh. back then. Um, it's pretty raw sometimes, you know? Philly still, I don't know. I still wouldn't go on some blocks, you know? Uh, and I saw a lot of violence, you know, or threats thereof, or I was t constantly on guard, you know, you know, maybe I shouldn't have been in those alleys so much, but you know, so, but since I pra started practicing these things, I'm forced to live in beautiful places where people don't bother me. And it's freaky. I don't, I just, I'm just here and I just, People invite me places. Hey, hey where do you want to come to Hawaii? I'm like, sure, why not? You know? Hey, where do you want to come to Bali? Sure, I don't mind, you know? And it's not, I don't know. It just happens this way, right? And uh, it really comes from how you act. And, uh, uh, you know, my Buddhist teacher calls it seeds. And that's a really good translation. Um, really, the old word is karma, but that's gotten so, so much weirdness attached to it that it's almost smart not to use it. But I was not smart enough not to use it. But it's, it's seeds, meaning if you plant... Wait, what did Jesus say? Uh, oh, he said... Ooh, um, Grapes do not beget thorns, uh, nor figs, thistles. He literally said that. He said, you, if you plant in kale, you ain't going to get radishes, dude. You know? If you go around hitting people, eventually you're going to get hit. And I used to hang out with everyone growing up. I used to hang out with the nerds, the tough guys, the geeks, the dorks, the freaks the rock and roll heavy metal kids, the hip hop kids, the punk kids, the hardcore kids, everyone. I tried to hang out with everyone and I kind of did. And I saw it, you know, you hang out with the tough guys, eventually there's gonna be a fight. It just happens. I actually was at a party once and uh, my friend, the same one who studied the, the Admiralty Law, he was hanging out with this dude and the dude was on drugs, you know, like uh, it was the beginning of the opioid crisis and he was like on oxys and, and we were at this party and there was way too many dudes at the party, which is a big mistake. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then he started like, what we talking Yang, talking shit to people and like mouthing off. And, uh, and he turned to me, he's like, Ed, because my full name is Ed, Edward, right? He's like, Ed, what's going to happen to me if I keep hanging out with this guy? And I was like, you're going to get hit, dude. You're going you're gonna to be in a fight. He's like, okay. Not more than 10 minutes go by. Okay? Like, a few minutes later, he's talking to the wrong person. Okay? Male, drunk. And he's like, da, 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 da. My friend, who's very chivalrous and loyal, jumps in the middle, gets hit in the face. Okay? How did I know? <laughs> it's obvious. You know, what, what you do, you know, and consequently who you attract, right, who's around you because of what you did, um, is eventually going to be your fate. And you can argue against it, and we can talk about it because, uh, you can say, you know, there's rich people who are greedy, you know, they didn't give, how come they have money? You can say, there's nice people who bad things happen to. Why do bad things happen? Why do, why do bad things happen to good people, wordsmith? Right? I mean, that's the question. If everybody wants to ask, 
the one question you want to ask God, right? Why do good things happen to bad people? Um, and there's reasons behind that. And it's basically, no one's purely good, no one's purely bad, right? And we've all done both ends of the spectrum. I, being human, I, the Buddhists kind of define human as that. Someone with mixed karma such that they have about a 50-50 split of good and bad things happening to them at any given time. And once that 50-50 split goes more to good, then there's, there's, an, there's an opportunity to do something different, you know? But if it goes bad, then that's an opportunity the other way. Anyway, okay, that's, that's my spiel. That's the spiel for today. Um, but I want to do some energy work because if I just spiel, you, you won't come back. You'll be like, ugh, this guy just keeps talking. It's annoying. Um, but that's the basically, that's the basics of it. Things are your responsibility. And I can explain more in depth than I will because I like to talk about it. Okay? Okay. But, or and, saying that, you have an opportunity to change. Ooh. Right? And it, it does entail deciding what you want, right? At least not what you want. You know, like, what's the first thing? Um, if, you, if you have an alcohol problem, what's the first thing you have to do? No 12-steppers in the group? Admit it. Yeah, exactly. You have to say, hi, my name's Word, and I'm a, and I'm a philosopher alcoholic, OK? You have to admit to yourself that you have a problem. Okay, I do have a problem. I, I can't stop reading philosophy. All right, I admit it. No, really, you have to admit that you have an issue. Meaning, you have to become conscious and then out of denial of a thing that's occurring, right? And so whatever it is in your world that you don't want to start, right? Uh, you have to admit, okay, somehow, I'm connected to this thing. Um, okay, who wants to be my victim? We're gonna play an energy game. Come on. Don't be shy now. I know <laughs> no one I know on this call is actually shy, so I don't wanna hear. Chelsea, you're my victim. You have to unmute though. Okay. Chelsea's the least shy person I know, so I know she wouldn't mind. Hi, Chels. Hey. How are you doing? Great. How are you? Good. So last year, I, I uh, started a group called the Manifestators, and Chelsea was in that group, and we learned how to manifest stuff, and it was fun. And everyone in that group is manifesting really cool stuff right right chelsea yeah. chelsea became a doctor since then so it worked right chelsea I think so. <laughs> okay good um okay we're gonna play a game uh let me see i'm trying to think of something that isn't too private but will prove that i know what i'm talking about uh, uh do you mind talking about money mind. Okay, money. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, almost everyone, especially Americans, right? They want to make more money because that's the thing. Okay. I mean, I remember in first grade and be like, I want to be rich. I want to be rich when I grow up. First grade, I was like, I'm going to be rich. Because um, even by the time you're five, you know, that's like what everyone's like trying to do or something, right? At least in this country, other cultures are different. Okay. So, so I'm here to tell you that however much money, we'll just say annually, okay, just to make it easy. However much money that you are currently making annually is how much money consciously, or excuse me, unconsciously you think you are allowed or slash deserve annually. And you say to me, hey, word, that's ridiculous. 
I want to make much more money. I deserve tons more money than what I make. I say, consciously, you're, you want to make more money. But subconsciously, for whatever reason, you have a belief of how much money you can slash want to slash deserve to make. Okay? Okay, Chelsea, you want to, Chelsea's played this game with me before, right, Chelsea? Maybe, I think so. It all sounds familiar. Okay, cool. Well, I think we played it. It's a good game because everyone wants money, so, uh, <laughs> I mean, generally. Um, okay, here we go. So this game requires, so in this class, we're going to learn distance healing. Does, has anyone never experienced distance healing? David, hasn't. Daniela, I can't see your hands. Audrey? Okay. Okay, maybe a couple of us. Okay, you haven't. So distance healing means I can heal Chelsea even though she's far away <laughs> and vice versa. I can interact with her in such a way, energy, right? Energy work. In such a way as to create a shift in her feeling slash mental slash physical state, okay? Um, and maybe you don't believe in that. I don't know. It's my life. I'm here to tell you it happens to people. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to tune in with Chelsea's body, like her physical form. Okay. First, what I'm going to do is tune in with my own physical form. Okay. Become very conscious of who I am in where I am in space. Okay. So that is very required. And that's one of the key main reasons we meditate. We're not meditating so we leave our body. We're meditating to go 100% in your body. Your body is like 1 billion times smarter than the like 1% of your brain that you're probably using. Okay, it's telling you all kinds of stuff all day. It's telling you who to date, what to eat, when to get up, um, uh, how much to sleep, um, where to go, what job to take. It's trying to tell you everything. Are you listening? Probably not, <laughs> because we're trained not to in this culture. But if you do, you, your life will become smoother, at least, I would say. OK, so I, I'm going into my body. So um, you can just start feeling your toes, even, because people tend not to feel their, all the way to their toes or even like your fingertips. But people tend to be more conscious of their upper body, at least in our culture. Okay, so I'm feeling my toes, my feet, my legs in general, my hips, my torso, my arms and hands, my head. Okay, that's my body. Okay, back and front. Don't forget the back, you have a back. Okay, good. Now, using the same awareness, First Chelsea though, Chelsea, now you tune in with my body, Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Expand though, not just the core, feet to toe. I mean, excuse me, head to toe. Good, okay, you feel that? Good, okay. Now you retract that. Okay, good. Okay, now we're gonna play the game, okay? So now I'm tuning with your body. Okay, hi, Chelsea. I'm in the room with you. Eh. I've been to Chelsea's house. It's really nice. She's in the study right now. Coming over. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say a number, okay? And you're going to tell me 0 to 100%. 0 to 100. It's just a percentage. Okay, the number represents how much I'm going to say this, you're going to make this much next year, okay? And we're going to see how much of your body is in tune with that. Okay, everyone following? This is really important. If you can do this on yourself, your life will become extremely, extremely easy, okay? Easier, at least. Okay, okay, Chelsea, next year, you're going to make $1,000. Okay, zero to 100. As far as how true I feel like that is? 
Yeah, how, how aligned are you with that? Well, I'm going to make a thousand dollars, but I'm going to make more than a thousand dollars. So yeah. yes, and no. Here's the game. Here's the game. I'm telling you, you're gonna make a hundred, a thousand dollars next year. That's how much you're gonna make. Oh, total. Okay. How much of your body? How how much of you zero to a hundred is into that? Yeah, my whole body just rejected that. I was like, no, that's not true. Yeah, it's not. No. So I got I got zero to one percent. Okay. So just try to get a number, just because. Hmm. feelings are harder to quantify right by definition so the numbers help because you can write the number down and then next week be like oh the number changed okay okay watch okay so yeah you're you're supposed to reject that one you did good okay okay how about this next year you're gonna make five thousand dollars zero to a hundred yeah that's still in that zero range yeah yeah yeah. okay zero range okay let's let's forget about that obviously you don't want no five thousand dollars. You live in the bay. You can't even buy a bagel with that. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna need a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> can't even leave your house with that. All right, cool. All right. So, okay, let's get in some real numbers. All right, some some real money. You ready? You ready? Okay. Next year, Chelsea, you're gonna make thirty G's. Okay, zero to hundred. That is still in the the low number range. Yeah, throw a number out there. Let me. See. What do you get? That's like zero to three. Really? Yeah. No, no, no. You got to filter. Not what you want to make. No. Okay. I'm gonna say the number, and then you just in your body, just tell me what your body feels. Okay? Because I got a way different number than you, which is indication to me. Try again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, I feel a one with that. Really interesting. Oh, uh, I got sixty-eight percent. Oh, interesting. Okay. I believe and, I'm more than you believe in me. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Tell me this. Just say yes or no. Is that close to the amount of money you made this year? Yes or no. That is close to the amount that I made this year, but I have larger goals. Yeah, I know. That's different. That's different. And I knew it was close because of the percentage I got. Hmm. The percentage. So we're not talking about how much you want to make. That's different. Because right. you want to make a million. Okay, fine, right? Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to tap into is your body actually has an amount that it, it has a ceiling. Okay. And when we hit that ceiling, it's going to directly reflect how much money you made this year. Mm -hmm. You can't tune into that ceiling. It will be very hard for you to change the amount of money you're making. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be operating from a good place in your mind. It's like, I'm going to make money. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But then there's going to be all these stops, all these obstacles, or it's not going to seem that important, or the opportunities aren't going to come in. And so what creates that blockage um, is a whole bunch of beliefs. But once you can see those beliefs and be like, hey, um, I don't believe I'm worth it. That's how much my mama made. Um, you know, I think having money is not spiritual and I'm spiritual. Like these are very common beliefs held by people, which then put a cap on their salary, on their income, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're going to tune in a little bit more, okay? Try a little bit more. And then I'll bother someone else. I'll victimize someone else. Don't worry. Um, okay. Chelsea Rutherford. This year, or next year, you're going to make Say around a five. <laughs> okay. Can I can I can I tell you my suspicion? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, one more and I'll tell you my suspicion. Okay. Does that gotta feel does it feel still attached to more of my goals and desires? Not attached, it's a filter. Okay, I'll help you dissolve the filter, okay? Ready? Okay. 
dissolve the filter. Yeah, it's just you're focusing, and it's cool because you're coming from the school of thought where you're you're really into positive thinking, correct or incorrect? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But positive thinking has a limit, and that limit is like the actual subconscious thought. You can be like, "I'm going to do good. I'm going to do good. I'm going to do good." But if you're like dragging an anchor, it's hard to make that a reality, right? Mm, and is that kind of a version of a spell in that sense? It kind of is. I mean, positive, there's nothing wrong with positive thinking, but without uh, unearthing what's going on under, it, it, it can be severely limited in its, its efficacy, right? Right, and that's why people have done all these like affirmations and stuff, and then they're like, affirmations don't work. And you're like, well, did you clear all the negative affirmations, um, the negations that were stopping the affirmations? They're like, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what we're talking about, okay? We'll do one more number. Chelsea Rutherford. <laughs> um, you're going to make $100,000 next year. I'm like 10. <laughs> that, you're 10. You mean 100%, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. And I knew it, too. I knew, because of the percentage I got, I knew that um, you, you hadn't you made under a hundred thousand this year, right? Yes. It had to be, right? And so you want to make a hundred thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. And then like, you probably, you probably made, I mean, you probably made uh, 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 like, I don't know, 40-ish, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But that's what your body told me. Because mm -hmm. when, when we, we when we got to 30, it told me one thing. When we got to 50, it told me another. And so I knew it was between 30 and 50. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we have to, like, cultivate um, that body awareness to tell us. Because your body believes... There's this saying. Uh, oh, this famous entrepreneur said it. He's like, you can't make a million dollars if you're a $50,000 man. <laughs> you know? Like, if you're a $50,000 type of dude, you ain't making a mill, all right? Because you ain't going to make million-dollar decisions. You ain't going to make million-dollar friends. You're not going to make million-dollar, you're not going to have million-dollar ideas. And you're not going to put in million-dollar work because mm -hmm. a lot of people want to make a mill, right? It's not going to, it's kind of like not even a big deal anymore, right? A lot of people want to make a million dollars, but, and it's just examples. I'm not saying make a mill, whatever, make as much as you need or want, but then all of a sudden you're like, but are, what do you, what do you, what do you do for work? What are you selling? Like, you just want it, but what are you offering? What do you do? And they're like, oh, I just want it. You're like, so they have an idea, which is very superficial, but below that, they're, they're like a, you know, $40,000 type, type of dude. And that's, and they'll make the exact amount. I mean, it's, it's exactly precise. Mm -hmm. I've seen it happen so many times. Like, I set a financial goal, I do the work. And it even seems like I'm not gonna reach the goal. And I'm like, oh, wow, I really thought I had this. And then someone just hands me the rest. They're like, I'm like 5,000 short. They're like, oh, oh, here, here's $5,000. I'm like, okay. And it just, it's like, ding, there's the number. And I'm like, whoa, there it is for the millionth time. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have more faith next time. Okay. Okay, good. Um, okay, good, Charles. Thanks for being my victim. I mean, volunteer. Um, any questions about that? How I did it, what I'm doing? Who is this weird guy on this call? I have a question. Yes, David, what is your question, sir? How do you feel her body? That is a perfect question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's basically like this. Um, unfortunately, wait, there's this term. Uh, uh, I forget what it is. My friend always uses it. Un unconscious. It's kind of like unconscious abilities, like cool stuff people can do. Like, ever try to go to a dance class with someone who's like a natural dancer and like, and, and you're like, well, how do you, 
twerk like that. They're like, I don't know, just shake your butt. And you're like, what? You're not teaching me, you know? They're like, I don't know, I just do it, you know? Like, uh, unconscious, I forget what it's called. Um, there's a little of that with me because I, I have a penchant for some of this stuff. But what I can tell you is, like I did in the beginning, really tune in with your body deeply, okay? And, not, and don't imagine yourself in your head tuning with your body. That's different. Tune in with your body, right? And then you kind of, are you wearing a police t-shirt? Yeah. Okay, man. You got, you got like 10 more cool points, all right? Uh, <laughs> so you tune in with your body more, and then you can kind of like, you expand it. You can, you can feel yourself like move. One of my teachers says it's actual spatially, you know, like um, me and my sister and my brother used to play this game when we were kids where the whole, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. But it gets like this far and you're like, stop, get away, you know? And like, they're not touching you, but you feel this like, Neh. you're like, no, ill, like get out of me, get out of here, you know? It's that sensation, like, and it's, it's your aura, or um, in Chinese, they say a way chi feel. It is, it is the space around you, and um, it doesn't have to be, like, mystical. Like, literally, you can extend that, and you can contract and extend it, right? And uh, contract and expand it. And so that's what you want to do. But when it's distance, it's a little different. Do you want to do it together? You want to you try something, David? You want to you play this? You never had distance healing, so I'm... I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be the guy, okay, you ready? Okay. Okay, so really feel your feet, actually, feel your feet. Yeah, drop in like the bottoms of your feet or your toes and your toes. Good, all right, you dropped in, nice, good. Great, and then now just move that awareness to the space around you. You can just be like an inch or two or three off your body. Good, and you can even move that awareness to fill the room. Expand to the corners of the room, the floor, ceiling. Yeah, even feeling objects in the room. Yes, very good. Okay, that's a great starting place. Now, you first. You, through the call, you can look at me, it might be easier. Through the call, through the Zoom, because we're connected through the Zoom, right? Otherwise, we couldn't be having a conversation. We're connected. So extend into my space. I'll give you permission. Hi, David. Come. We're doing some distance work. You're invited. Good. OK. Do you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Hi. Good. Now retract that back to, to your space. All right, now, now feel for me, just like you'd feel for that annoying sibling finger, okay? Okay, and now here I come. Good, now I'm in the room. Okay, can you feel it? It just feels like a slight buzz or a slight tension. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, exactly, okay. Okay, now I'm attracting back, okay? Now we're both in our own little bubbles, okay? So that's it, that's the basic skill. And if you can do that, you can do a lot, actually. You can tell if people are creeps. You can tell if girls like you. I'll be like explicit. Oh. I'm, I'm like like you. I and I've been to a point where I had to like stop being around people because I'm. I can hear you thinking, and I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so you have to leave. I've had relationships end because of that. So yeah. I'm super interested in like not only cultivating that and using it to help people, but also like being able to sort of not have it. Like, yeah. no. like, it's getting thrown up in the air sometimes. <laughs> oh, no, it's extremely important. Um, me and my friend are reading a boundary book right now. It's all about boundaries, okay? We, wanna, we have to be able to set healthy limits, just like the chick and the egg, for our nurturing, right? Um, yeah, at first, um, this, a lot of this became very overwhelming to me. I remember this one time, I was in Philly, um, Fishtown, if you guys, if anyone knows Philly. So I'm in Fishtown and I'm living between I-95, 
which is like one of the biggest highways in the country, and the L train in Philly, okay? Um, and then like, there's a McDonald's here. There's the 95, the L and McDonald's, and then my house, okay? I'm extremely sensitive. I can hear, you can feel tractor trailers going past me on the highway. They're, like the whole building shakes when I'm in my house. You can feel it. You, and you can feel the L, the, the subway, right? Um, moving by. And so one day I was like, you know what? I should have some juice. I love juice. Right, so I had it was a, uh, but I was I had all these beats, so I was like, ah, I'll just go crazy on the beats, and I don't know if you guys know about juice, but beats are super cleansing. And I didn't have, but that's all I had, so I was like, ah, I'll just have a bunch of beats. So and it's like winter in Philly, okay? That's my first mistake. So I have this beat, and I like down it. And I'm like, okay. And at that time, I was working at a crystal shop. Of course, I was working at a crystal shop, and. Uh, so I, so I have my beet juice and I'm like, oh, off to the crystal shop. I walk out of the house. I get to under the L train. L means elevated, if you don't know. I go under the L. In one second, first of all, all my awareness explodes. I see everyone's auras, like multicolor, like explosion. I'm like, oh my God. And then I smell eight or nine either toxic or noxious smells in the span of like two seconds. And I was like, no. And I went back in my house. I'm like, I ain't going nowhere. Because you can't really function like that, right? And so <clears throat> I had to learn from that experience and others um, how, to, how to expand and contract and form a stronger or more a less or more permeable boundary around myself, right? And there's ways to do that consciously. And that's part of what this class is about. Um, because there's reasons that you are uh, sensitive and because um, you're empathic, you're sensitive and but you, you experience over sensitivity, right? And really that's a boundary issue. And, you know, that can go really deep and you know, we can touch on some of that stuff, but basically you wouldn't have that issue if you didn't have other boundary issues, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I've been in process for many, with many of those things. For exactly. last well, I'm glad you admitted it. I, I didn't want to, you know, blow up your spot, but <laughs> it's, it's a fact though. That's why I don't have to guess anymore. It's like, if your aura is super permeable, that means by definition, you have boundary issues. Because that is your boundary, right? So to clear that up, you got to clear up the boundary issues, right? And there's a lot of different things you can do. We're going to go over some of those techniques in class. Um, but the number one thing that I found is you have to believe that you're allowed to have a boundary, right? Which starts to get super deep because, you know, I don't know how you were raised. But how I was raised, um, we weren't allowed to have certain boundaries. Like you weren't allowed to like lock the doors in the house and stuff like that. Like, and so that creates, you know, your outer environment, your inner environment. So then that creates you to have this boundary where you you're, you can't have. It's like you're not allowed to have privacy or like a a container that works for you. And so then you have to build kind of artificial containers around you to supplement the container that you have that doesn't quite work for you. Right? Yeah. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Okay. okay, wait, you want to play a game about your boundaries? You want to learn? Sure. Yeah, forget money. Let's do boundaries. This is important. Okay, let me show you. Um, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna tune with you. Okay, so we're consciously doing this. So this is- Same thing we just did. Yeah, same thing. So you just feel yourself and I'm gonna just extend my energy in, and into your space purposefully for this exercise and this exercise alone, okay? Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm here. Hey buddy, what's up? Um, so David, um, zero to 100%, okay, zero to 100. 
how much are you allowed to create a safe space for yourself? 70. That's not what I got. What did you get? 13%. Really? Yeah. And like, and this happens, especially in the beginning of this work, because honestly, a lot of this stuff can be quite painful. And I, and uh, I don't intend to bring up any um, averse pain for you. But what happens is we create like a conscious bubble around ourselves so we can believe things that aren't necessarily true, you know? And uh, that's why we need girlfriends and therapists and teachers, <laughs> right? Because the teacher would be like, you'd be like, I'm doing great. They'd be like, mm, a couple things you need to work on. You're like, what? You're like, well, you know, human, right? So it's about 13%, but I, let's, let's check in about the 70%, okay? Cause, okay, go ahead, yeah. Let's just check in, let's just check in. This is, I'm just reading your body, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, not lately, but in the past. <laughs> How, the 70%, so you have a filter. The filter is, uh, oh, okay, I see the filter. Yeah, how safe do you feel in the space that you're in now? Zero to 100. Yeah, look, I think like 60. Yeah, I think it's around that 70. I think that's what you're feeling. You feel, you've cultivated a nice little space around you, right? Yeah. Mostly working. With some, some hiccups, correct? Yeah, that's human. But let me tell you, let's just say this. If you were, I don't know, if you were at a, I don't know. If you're at a nightclub, then you're more right. It's more oh, like. Yeah. I was just about to say, I was about to say a party. Perfect. Good, David. You're telepathic too, aren't you? Right, you just, you admitted that. Yeah, you're telepathic. Good job. You're picking up on my thoughts. Here we go. Yeah, I was going to say party. Uh, but nightclub's perfect. Yeah, if you were at a nightclub in this public open space, zero to 100. Yeah, more like 13. Exactly. Yay! Exactly. You got it. So, yes, in the current place you're in with the things that you have that you need, the space, what have you, it goes up, which is fine because otherwise it's very hard to live at a 13% safety. I mean, that's nervous breakdown kind of percentage, right? You'll start to feel paranoid or fearful or anxious and you can't really function at that, right? Yeah, and that's just how it is. I mean, um, I mean, for any of this stuff, these base human needs like safety, security, um, food, clothing, shelter, um, loving touch, all these things, if you start to get, as soon as you start getting under like the 50, 40%, we start to have some, some, some hardship come up in our mind, right? Yeah, and that's just how it works. But you can change it. Okay. Um, do you want you want to see the percentage go up? Well, I don't have any real desire to go to nightclubs, but in yeah. general, yeah, I'd, I'd like it. Yeah. yeah like no, right. Nightclubs is just a space where you would feel exposed, so then it just reveals the real number, you know? Right. Um, yeah, no nightclubs. Um, unless you want. Not really. Maybe you need to go in a nightclub. I don't know. Practice boundaries, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. That's a good attitude. Good, good, good. Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, let me see. Um, okay, so, okay, I'm just, just, just play with me here. Uh, in your field, I see you made a decision that you actually made a decision that you're not allowed to have certain boundaries. Okay, and that might seem ludicrous. I don't know, um, but you might decision when you were like three or something. Hi, Miko. Hi, Word. Uh, Hi, everybody. <laughs> thanks for coming on. Okay. <laughs> so you might have made the decision when you were really, really young, right? Mm -hmm. And so then, you, then it gets kind of buried and you're like, no, 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 I think, no, I'm allowed to be safe. And you're like, mm -mm. okay. So let's just go with, let's just pretend that that's the case, okay? Okay. Okay, so then pretending that that's the case, let's say you're going to consciously 
um, consciously exit any agreements that you made where you're not allowed to make boundaries. Okay. Are you interested in that? Sure. Okay, that's your assent. Okay, contract lifted. Okay, gone. Okay, now let's go back to the nightclub. You ready? I have to now embody that feeling. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Ta- I mean, I, I can do it uh, mentally pretty good. So I don't have to, like, you know, don't freak yourself out or anything. But zero to 100, if you went to a nightclub, how safe would you be? Now I feel more like 40. Well, it's pretty high. I got 20. But that's either one to rise, okay? Okay, but basically, if you break down that whole web, which is the boundary issue, it would just go to 100 eventually. And you'd be like, eh. Or like in the 90s, 90 percentage is, which is totally functional, right? I mean, if someone starts shooting a gun, you probably shouldn't feel safe in a nightclub. You'd leave, uh, for instance. But you get it? Yeah. Yeah. So we just... I basically do that ad infinitum with like different techniques for different parts. And a lot of it is about getting conscious. Okay. So, but to get conscious, it does require active participation on your part. And it does require the intention to want to get out of a denial state. Okay. And, and not all at once, you know, I've done this work, regularly for many years and i've done too much too you know too much as well where i start to learn too many things about myself too fast and you can have a mental breakdown you know in india and tibet and china you know they have specific herbs just for people who meditate too much okay we don't have that in the states because like no one meditates (laughs) you know like I mean, 1% if that, right? And if, and maybe those people are casual meditators. But we're talking about cultures for thousands of years where people went on meditators and retreats for, you know, three years, seven years, 12 year, 15 year. I've heard of 21 year retreat, you know? Some like, you know, high lamas and stuff. Okay, and they come out and they're like, whoa, just like white light. They're like, oh my God. Um, but you know, maybe if I went in there after two weeks, I'd just have like a, like a mental breakdown. Because if you just meditate enough, basically all this comes to the surface. And so there's this old joke. A uh, student goes to his teacher. He's like, teacher, teacher, you know, I want to learn how to meditate. Can you teach me how to meditate? He's like, yeah, 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 I'll teach you how to meditate. So he teaches him basic meditation. He's like, you know, just do this meditation five minutes a day, five minutes a day for a week. See you next week. Student student is very excited. They do the meditation about five minutes a day and they come back and they're like, oh my God, teacher. Teacher's like, what, everything all right? Your meditation is making me crazy. And the teacher's like, "Ah, no, 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 no. You were crazy before the meditation. You're just noticing now, right? And that's what happens. We start to notice, but if we start to notice too much, too quickly, it's like uh, uh, too many things through a funnel, right? The funnel will just eventually jam, okay? But their thoughts, they're active. They influence our way of being, you know, thought forms. And so those thought forms will then get, you'll feel stuck and then you'll feel depressed or crazy or whatever, because I mean, literally we have channels in our body right? Energy channels. The Chelsea, Chelsea's an acupuncturist. If you're in the Bay, hit her up. She's great. Okay. Right. In acupuncture, they have um, 12 main channels with two extra and then six more. Right. Right, Chelsea? Yeah. But really, between all those channels are little channels that connect them, right? Jing Lo the big ones, the Jing, and then the low, the ones that connect them. And same thing with the yogis. They're like, oh, Nadis, there's thousands of these little channels. And some of them are as small as the space between, a, you know, like capillaries, right? Space between cells and capillaries, like very small. And other ones are quite big, like in front of the spine or um, in the legs or something, you know? And some of them around, uh, some of them form 
around them form things like arteries and veins and uh, other you know, skeletal, you know, skeletal structures, other structures of the body. Anyway, those channels can get blocked, like too much moving through them at once will get blocked. And then if they get blocked, you will have health problems. And if certain ones in the head get blocked or the heart especially, you will have mental problems or emotional problems. And, and my teacher used to say, you will have an emotional problem that no doctor can cure. Why? Because they do not believe in energy channels. They do not think it's real. So what happens if you go to the doctor, they'll give you drugs or medication or what have you, surgery or, or you'll see a therapist, but it won't stop because, I mean, all you gotta do is like press this one point or something, right? And then it'll all drain out, you know, or press this point and it'll all just drain. But they don't know that. They don't believe in that. They weren't trained in that. They just don't know. Um, but it, it's all based on the channels. Um, so it's very important to become conscious of these things but to the capacity that you can come conscious of them. And like, I wanna encourage all of you, if you wanna take my course, which you do, cause you're in it, um, to have a support mechanism, okay? So many times in my life, I have not had enough support. I have survived regardless, but I have to call my friends a lot on the phone, okay? You know who you are. And I'm like, I'm going crazy. Um, because all that, so much is coming up. And they're like, what? Word, stop, stop, <laughs> stop meditating. I'm like, never. Um, but that's really how it works, you know? Um, and it's very important to know your capacity and to have a teacher, some kind of therapist. And I recommend a teacher, a therapist, and a body worker. You know, acupuncturist counts. Okay, something like that. Someone that deals right to the body, someone deals with your mind, and someone who can guide you through these practices. I can do some of the basics of guidance, but it's nice to have somebody, you know, on hand, right? In AA, you have a sponsor, right? You can call them anytime, any day. You know, if you're in Hawaii and you start to go crazy, and you're imagining yourself jumping in the ocean, you can call them and be like, oh my God, I'm gonna jump in the ocean. They're like, no, 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 don't do it, okay? So I recommend these things. You should have them anyway, probably, but definitely if you're gonna try these practices. Okay. Any questions, comments? Concerns. Other than meditation herbs. Who is that, Chelsea? Mm -hmm. The herbs that you mentioned for too much meditation. Just curious. <laughs> Me and Chelsea are teaching a herbal program called Herbs for Yogis. <laughs> Starting. Wait, is that to start tomorrow? That starts tomorrow. Are you going to be there? Hopefully. Uh, and uh, we're teaching herbs. <laughs> there's tons of there's tons of meditation herbs. It depends on what culture. I mean, you know some of the Chinese ones, but the more famous Indian ones, you know, Ayurvedic ones are like Gotu Kola. That one's for concentration. Um, Shilajit, that one's calming and builds like the essence. Ayurveda, they don't say Jing, they say Ojas. Um, but it builds like the Ojas. Um, and there's a wide variety, I mean like just in Chinese medicine, if it supports the overall mental state, the overall, it will help in meditation. Um, what's the other ones? Jata Mansi, that's a famous one for like nervous system stuff, concentration kind of stuff. Um, Tulsi, that's a super famous one. Um, and if you already have like anxiety issues, which you all do, because you're all empaths. So you have all the issues of everyone around you. <laughs> if you don't learn, if you didn't learn how to have good boundaries so or you just smoke ganja which is fine that's a herb too but you know i guess i was imagining that there would be too much energy kind of floating up and i was assuming that the herbs would be more grounding herbs but it sounds like um yeah a different theory behind that there's different ways 
There's nerves which just calm the nervous system. Um, there's ones that interact like kind of with the shen, right? Um, with the heart, and they they help to just kind of relax things. Like in Chinese medicine, like uh, huquan hua, huquan pi. Um, there's things that clear the orifices, the the spaces that get blocked, like yuan zhi, pali yala does in Chinese medicine. There's different methods, and it depends on the person. Obviously, I mean, you know that. Um, uh, but yeah, there's ways to bring it down. I mean, if you want to bring it down fast, I don't recommend herbs. I recommend gemstones. Mm. They work faster than herbs. Mm. In a tight magnet, you'll be like, you'll go to sleep. <laughs> you'll be so calm. Black gemstones, hematite, tourmaline, um, um, not obsidian, not moldavite. Hematite's my favorite. Magnetite, which is related to hematite. I haven't used it as much. There's many. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? Okay, I'm gonna start picking on more victims. Who wants to make more money? Woo! Bethany does. Come on, Bethany, being all quiet there. Okay, Bethany, you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. It worked um, before, but yeah. Actually, I got a different hit with you, not money. Can we talk about housing? House? Okay. <laughs> you ready for this? <laughs> Thank you so much. You want to? Do I want to? Talk about the house thing? Yeah. <laughs> no, let's talk about money. Forget it. Let's talk about money. Let's talk about I'm, money. I'm content at, at home. I'm content generally, but right. it's about an exercise. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It let's talk about housing because they're just going to give a different example. Okay. Let's talk about okay. it. Okay. I just want to put you on blast or nothing. All right. Blast me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's just drop into our bodies. Which is the number one thing? If you learn one practice from today, because you came to learn energy work, I just keep talking. Uh, learn this one thing. Be in your body, okay? If you have, if you're anxious, you're probably not in your feet, okay? I mean, if you're angry, you're probably not in your feet. If you are sad, you're probably not in your feet. Meaning, um, a lot of those emotions function by raising energy up, right? Um, ag anger tends to shoot it up. Sadness tends to bring it up and then have it coalesce. Um, anxiety tends to like kind of flutter here. Um, but if you kind of enter your whole body, it will immediately take you out of a lot of the actually identification with the emotion, which is just a feeling. There's nothing wrong. Feelings, nothing more than feelings, right? What's that, cats? I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with them, okay? You just, but if you're not feeling them, if you're thinking about how they feel, then they'll persist, okay? So just learn to be in your body all the way to the toes and all the way to the fingertips and make sure you get your back, okay? So let's do that right now. Bethany, feel your back, feel your spine. Good. Notice your hips. Notice your knees. Notice your feet, the bottoms of your feet. Good. Okay. Let's just do this money thing. You ready? You ready to make more, more cash? <laughs> I'm trying to make it rain and you're just saying sure. Come on. <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Okay, good. Yes, that's what I want. Okay, here we go. So actually you you first, you expand your field and then just kind of just feel it touching mine. It doesn't have to go deep or learn anything. Just feel it. Yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. Good. Nice. Feel that? Yes. Good. Now contract it. So bring it back, bring energy back. Yeah. Close to you. Good. Okay.
Okay. Now I'm going to expand mine. And we do Qigong, we just do all these hand motions and the hand motion just means the thing that your body's supposed to do. I'm going to teach Qigong class too. So if you want to come to that, you can. Okay. Okay, good. Now I'm touching your energy field. You feel me? Hi, Bethany, I'm touching your energy field. Good. All right. So we're going to just do numbers. I like numbers because numbers, the numbers don't lie. That's what they say, right? Um, <laughs> sometimes they, they get fudged, but okay, let's see. So we're going to just talk about the same thing we do with Chelsea next year. Bethany, you're going to make 20 G's. Zero to hundred percent. How's that feel? Yeah, give me a so I, I, I agree that I am going to make $20,000, but is that the cap? If I tell you, you're just going to make 20 Gs next year. Oh, flat. Oh. Okay. How does that feel? Yeah, flat. Just 20. Yeah, it doesn't resonate at all. Okay. It's not even a percentage. Zero. Percent. Yeah. It's like, you're like, nah, I ain't, I ain't getting nowhere with that, right? Right. Okay. Can't pay my tax with that. All right, cool. Good. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I got. You're just like, man, get away. Okay, so let's go up. You ready? Sure. <laughs> 75. 75,000. So good. 20%, 30%, 35% max. I got even lower. I got even lower. Yeah. And, really? Yeah. I'm just trying to, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Good. Okay, let's go higher. <laughs> I have a seaweed monster here. Take it, take it. Oh, <laughs> oh good. I'm, I'm one of those. Um, all right. <clears throat> let's just say, let's just go big, because let's go bigger, because, you know, you're not into this, this, little, this little stuff, right? You're like, word, you're supposed to make it rain talking about 75 Gs. I ain't doing nothing with that. All right. <clears throat> 200 even next year. Right. A little better, right? Yeah. To work with it. I would love yeah, it. So, right. So zero to hundred. What is that? I don't have a high percentage because I almost don't. I have this my own belief system that I. Exactly. Like it's not. Yeah. No, that's not going to happen. But, yeah. What is? So. Tell me a number. I just need a number just to make it quantifiable. Seventeen percent. Seventeen. Okay, good. 17. Okay, just, just remember that. 17. <clears throat> okay, let's go down. 100, even. 100%. You feel, you feel 100% with that? Yeah. Right. Okay, and that makes sense to me. Okay, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm going to blow you up, but are we getting to the range of what you actually make? That's what I make. <laughs> So I'm like, if I have my job next year, <laughs> exactly. you and like, it's not a diss. It's just how it is. You are you right now. You are a hundred thousand dollar woman, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Someone else is. Thanks to you, Ed, because I thought I was a forty five thousand dollar woman for a hot second until you were like diamond cut it up and like, and I wrote down the number and I got exactly that number and then I it, it, it since gone up a bit, but yeah. I know she gonna write a testimony for my website. Okay. Good. Another success. <laughs> uh, can we yeah. do a relationship one though, Ed? What's that? Because I think I'll really be in tune with that, like in terms of relationships, but that might be a separate exercise. No, 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 we're done. We're going there. Ready? We got five minutes. Three of them are going to okay. be for Bethany right now, okay? But you see how it works? She was 100% at 100 Gs. She makes 100 Gs, right? So that's not an accident. If you learn to tune in, really, you will know exactly what you're, what's going on in your life. And then from there, you just start looking at the layers, right? And that does take some, med some meditative ability, you know? Because at first you'd be like, I don't know. You're just like, my Sifu, my Qigong teacher as a joke. You ask them, how do you feel? And they're like, hungry. <laughs> like, in the beginning, people can't feel much. They just, they just feel the basic stuff. Hungry, tired, angry, you know, sleepy, you know? 
especially dudes, because we get this whole, you're not allowed to feel thing, right? In our culture, right? Um, but that's a whole other story. Okay, relationship, you ready? All right, we got two more minutes here. Um, okay. Z okay, your perfect relationship, okay? Dream, whatever. Zero to hundred percent. How much do you deserve your perfect relationship? What do you get? I I'm getting an. I don't know if I'm getting nineteen or ninety-eight. So I'm not. <laughs> oh, you wanted ninety-eight. Wow. You're getting nineteen. <laughs> yeah. I got. That's it. That's I, it. I got 13. Yeah, and just tell me, like, as far as your relationships go, would you say you have about 20% of what you want in a relationship? 20%? Yeah, 19, 19%. Like, yeah, like, yeah, out of 100%? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, I'll give it 20%. Exactly. You have about 20% of what you want in a relationship. But that's, and it's not a diss, this is just how it works. That's how much of a relationship you feel like you deserve. It's true. All right, there's the science. <laughs> no, it's just, I have not met and seen a person that this doesn't, is not accurate on. I mean, many people are in denial and they won't admit it. And I can tell, but I don't know. I, I don't blow them up. Cause it's like trying to tell an alcoholic they're an alcoholic when they're not ready, it doesn't work. You just nod your head and they're not ready for this kind of therapy, but you all wouldn't have come here today if you weren't at least somewhat ready for this kind of thing, okay? And there it is. So that's the basics. So here's your homework, ready? So it's a donation-based class. I'm not charging you. I'm a busy man, okay? The thing you all gotta do is some homework, okay? And this homework is designed to make you wildly successful, okay? People who I've worked with in the last few years, the ones who've worked the hardest are ridiculous. Like right now, like, okay, we're in the middle of a plague, literally, okay? What do you think's happening? How many million Americans lost their jobs? 48 million, I don't know. It's like ridiculous. We had the biggest economic downturn in American history in one quarter, 32.9%, bigger than the Great Depression, last quarter, okay? These people, their money is going like this, okay? It, there's nothing to do with pandemics or whatever. The reason there's a pandemic has to do a lot with their own thing if they see that too, but their money in the pandemic aren't, don't mean the same thing, for instance, okay? They don't correlate necessarily, right? I think Jeff Bezos made $13 billion in one day last week. Actually, okay? So, I mean, you can complain about it, but that's the facts, all right? So what I want you all to do is you wanna write down a list. You can, it can be just one thing that you want. I don't, it doesn't have to be long. I like between one and 10 things, but don't force it. If you get to five and you run out of things, just stop. And make it clear, I want a brand new Mercedes-Benz next week. We might not have it next week. Whatever it is. Okay, I got my list. I got my dream board. I'm not going to show you my dream board. <laughs> I might show Chelsea. I might show you Chelsea. I don't know. Okay. Um, so... Write that down and then do the meditation that we practice, which means just feel your body head to toe, all the way to fingertips and your back. And it doesn't matter. I mean, you can do it for one second. I mean, it might be better to do it for one second, 20 times in a day, than try to sit there for 10 minutes and then you're just thinking about breakfast and, um, you know, how much money you don't have or something. Okay, so just tune in. What I'm asking you to do is during the day, tune in. If you need to lie down to do that, sit down to do that, go for a walk to do that, be in nature to do that, you can do those things. 
but tune in specifically with your body, which can include the breath, doesn't have to, but body, physical sensations, the fact that you're in a body, that whole spectrum of things. Okay. Um, and what else? Oh yeah, and then you can play a little bit with the expansion and contraction. It doesn't have to be much, but just keep your own bubble. Like we did it here together, like doing some distance healing. Everyone did perfect, everyone did great, but just don't do that yet because um, you gotta make sure you have like tight boundaries and good structure. And some of you know those things um, from other training, um, but not all of you. So I'm not recommending that for homework yet. Okay. And that's it. That's plenty, I think. And just have fun with it. Make it fun, whatever that takes for you. Don't make it hard. Don't make it work. It's a free class, you know, you're not, you're not losing them. Okay. You, I accept donations. The positive word at gmail.com. Okay. The same email address that sent you annoying Zoom reminders. Okay. So PayPal, PayPal. I don't have Venmo. Don't try to Venmo me. <laughs> yeah, Charles, I'm looking at you. Okay. Any questions before we go? Do you want to tell us about your other classes that you're teaching? Oh, thank you. Uh, sure. Well, I'm teaching a whole Tibetan course. Victoria's coming. Victoria, how's my Tibetan class? Very average. I'm joking. I'm joking. He's a very good teacher. Thanks. It's a lot of fun, actually. It's, it's, uh, it's funny and informative. And it, it, it's getting me thinking in a way that I haven't thought, um, that I haven't thought similar to since college. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm teaching Tibetan. I'm, I'm teaching for free. I'm teaching Sanskrit. That costs money, um, like 200 bucks. Classes start Friday. Um, I'm teaching um, acupressure with tuning forks. That one, you have to buy some equipment. That starts, Chelsea, when's that start? Wednesday? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> it's Wednesday, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I'm teaching a lot. And then um, I'm kind of teaching an ongoing Qigong class. Basically, these are almost all courses that people have asked me to teach. And so now I'm just teaching them and inviting everyone because it's on Zoom. So if I can teach one person, I can teach 50. It doesn't matter that much. And so, but guess what? I'll just send you all my whole schedule um, to your email addresses. And oh yeah, Herbs for Yogi starts tomorrow. That one's doing quite well. And uh, I'll send you all the info and then you can decide what you wanna do. How's that sound? How's that sound, Audrey? Camera's acting weird. She looks happy though. Okay, great. Any other questions, comments, plugs? Where did you say that you were teaching a yoga class? I am not teaching yoga class right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm teaching Qigong, um, some other stuff. I just stopped teaching yoga last week. Yoga would be a great class for you to teach. Not right now. Now, boundary. And any other? Uh, Please. What's that, Mika? Nothing. Oh, okay. Anyone <laughs> else? Anything else? I have okay. a question. Daniela, what is your question? How may I help you? So when we write the list and we are like doing the meditation that you said, what if we see that we have blockages, the unconscious contracts that you spoke about? Mm. What do we do about that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, if you see some and you become aware of them, just write them down because uh, we haven't really gone over. I mean, I did a little stuff with David. Um, that's fine. You can always say no. That's really what a boundary is. You say, nah, I don't want that. I mean, if you're really aware of it, you just say no. You know, you're an alcoholic. Okay, I don't want to be one anymore. You know? I yep. mean, right. That's, 
I mean, obviously I'm oversimplifying it. No, <laughs> I'm not trying to diss anybody's difficult process around substance abuse. But what I'm saying is on some level, you have to start saying no. Right. Yeah, and so. I've... Okay, so Daniela, what you can do for now is you can write, write can write them down. There's nothing wrong with that. If you see, just write, just write a list. Okay. And then you'll know exactly. Because sometimes we forget. You know, right. In it. So you can always refer to the list. And then you can bring the list to class and we can talk about them. <laughs> awesome. Show, Thanks. I can show you what to do. Okay? All right. Thank you. Okay. Good question. Okay. We're over time. I don't want to hold anybody. I know people got business. All right. So next week same time 4 p.m pacific 7 p.m eastern okay and everywhere in between you know what time zone you're in okay thank you so much that was wonderful believe it or not you are all making my dreams come true this is my dream come true i get to be home and still help people. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Take care. I will see you all next week. If you have any private questions that you want to ask here, just email me. And if you want to make uh, also a phone appointment or something, I do do those. And you can, um, you can do something over the phone. Okay? Bye, okay. Word. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye, thank my you. Friend. You can call me whenever. <laughs> Bye. Love you guys. Take care.